Now, here's your Farm and Ranch report from the Western Ag Network. Welcome back for today's Farm and Ranch news. Before we get to our Wyoming headlines, first we look again to more news from the U.S. Supreme Court. And for the second time in a week, the high court rejected Bayer's lawsuit, alleging that Roundup is not carcinogenic. The pharmaceutical company said that it is not surprised by the decision and pointed to the possibility of a change in the legal environment in its favor in the months ahead. Now, the court rarely explains why it refuses to hear cases and did not comment on either of the Roundup cases announced this week. Bayer has won four Roundup trials in a row in the last eight months as well. Well, let's look to Wyoming's latest crop progress numbers out for the state, and it shows that the sugar beet crop is in pretty good shape. It's rated 14% fair, 85% good, and 1% excellent. On the other hand, the winter wheat crop statewide is rated 40% poor to very poor, 48% good, and just 12% fair. We'll have more news coming up next. Before beef is what's for dinner, it starts out here with farmers and ranchers who choose to be Beef Quality Assurance certified. Because for them, the right way is the only way. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Returning back today, we see that corn and soybean growers support international promotion of U.S. pork, beef, and lamb. Why do they do that? Well, they invest portions of their checkoff dollars in market development efforts that are conducted by the U.S. Meat Export Federation. Now, record-level red meat exports of $18.7 billion in 2021 had a major impact on the corn and soybean industries. That's all according to a new independent study by the Jude Group. The study quantified the returns that red meat exports brought to corn and soybean producers in 2021. Nationally, beef and pork exports accounted for 537 million bushels of corn. That equates to $2.94 billion. Pork exports accounted for 99.3 million bushels of soybeans. Beef and pork exports accounted for 3.4 million tons of dry distiller grains as well. That equates to around $716 million. It's a great example of commodities and livestock groups working together to promote our high quality protein produced here in the U.S. That's today's Farm and Ranch News.